So I think the first thing is you've got to you've got to know the characters involved. Um, and so there's some, obviously some general stuff, but you know what each character is, and you know what each character does. And so you make their obvious character traits or their obvious behaviour or their inability to actually let the money go when they're pretending they're tipping the keeper, all that sort of stuff. You make all those finable. So yeah. every time someone turns up, they have to actually really work hard not to be themselves because by being themselves, they get fined. And inevitably what that does, that ends up with a massive kitty um, for the end of season shoot, lunch, supper or whatever. And you regale the stories about how, you know, X couldn't stop being obnoxious and B was always late and C always took his bird or, you know, there's always someone who turns up, they've never got quite enough cartridges, have they? Yes. Um, and the, oh, no, look, I brought my 20 ball cartridges and I brought my 12. Can anyone? Yeah, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so it is about knowing the people you shoot with to get the best result, I think. What I find most awkward, though, is when I get invited by someone terribly senior and a lot wealthier than me, uh, and then they dish out their own version of the fines at the start of the day, and it'll be, oh, OK, so we'll just have a light, you know, £100 if we see the see a cock pheasant on the first drive, and I'm sitting there going, Shit. <laughs> I'm not tooled up with enough cash for today for this very kind invite. But obviously, because it's an invite, you can say absolutely nothing about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the shoot where Guns on Pegs came from, the guy... Uh, chap called Eustace Crawley for some of our listeners who may have met this uh, awesome character uh, he used to fine but if he didn't feel that a fine was strong enough just send you home if you weren't shaven clean shaven or wearing a tie uh, and and obviously I think again like Ian's alluding to he just didn't if he didn't like the look of you this was his excuse you're not wearing a tie off you go <laughs> but it and was, I think that's I one of the good things isn't it is um Rather than having a whole set of laid down fines at the beginning, of course, it's very good to have a few uh, base rules. But if you have a couple of people who are responsible for the fines and it largely depends on the mood they're in on the day, who they think is, you know, doing whatever um, and just sort of give them the freedom to get on with it. Because uh, there's, there's, there's nothing more creative than just allowing some of the freedom to, to, to crack on at will. And it, it ends, ends up being extremely amusing. I think I think yeah I, I mean to to reiterate what Chris has said I think that that and what you have said Ian if if you look at the characters and look at their foibles and their traits and then design a, a fine for each individual you can be pretty confident that you're going to get them every time mm. uh, and therefore you'll have a nice big kitty there maybe is a little bit extra so they can slip to Basque perhaps at the end of the season um, that kind of thing um, yeah I think that's a but. I think, you know, we, we've got to throw this out to the listeners as well, haven't we, Chris? So um, yeah, if indeed. you're out there and you've got a particularly good example of a fine that, that you that runs on your syndicate or that you come across, drop us an email to pod at gunsonpegs.com uh, and uh, we'll share it in the next episode or so. And you'll get a set of podcast garters for doing so yes. if we read it out, which Ian is going to get a set of, the most exclusive gift in shooting. Uh, which, so, which I will be promptly fined for the next shoot I turn up on. Indeed, Definitely. because we've now said it out on air, so your syndicate will be listening, and then they'll be like, right, we'll create a fine for the most obnoxious garters.